So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack and a 10K SB alumnus, Miami cohort uh, 18. And uh, I run a digital marketing training company. Uh, I have I've met uh, a number of you before in some of the presentations that I've given. And this is kind of a, a signature workshop that I do um, and that I wanted to give uh, as a as kind of a gift to the 10 KSB community. Um, we're actually holding three or four of these um, and we've intentionally wanted to keep them small and intimate uh, to have more of a workshop feeling and to get give you guys um, a better experience. So I really appreciate you coming and uh, spending the time with us. Uh, it, this is a, an interactive session. So, you know, if I could have you just for this hour, you'll get a lot more out of it. Um, and uh, one of the, the goals that I have with this is uh, I'm really interested in meeting uh, and getting to know the challenges uh, that 10 KSB folks face when they're looking to implement their growth opportunity. So, you know, in full disclosure, the, the reason I'm, I'm hosting these sessions is, is a learning exercise to really understand um, the different types of 10 KSB business, B, B businesses and the challenges that you guys are facing uh, using digital marketing to execute your growth opportunity. One of the, the big pieces of feedback that uh, I'm one of the instructors in digital marketing in the Miami uh, cohort, and one of the big pieces of feedback we get consistently is around digital marketing and sales. Uh, and that that's a little bit of a, a kind of, I don't know if gap in the curriculum is the best way to put it. It's really kind of like the logical next step once you've established your growth opportunity uh, is to then uh, figure out how to sell, sell it uh, to strangers online. And, and that's really what BizHack Academy is, is all about. Uh, and that's what today's session is. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Ellen Barton and, and the boardroom for helping promote today's uh, session. And she's been a great partner to us, really appreciate that. Um, feel free guys to introduce yourselves in the chat. It's another chance to practice your elevator speech about who you are and what you do. Uh, feel free to, to throw your um, LinkedIn in there and we can all connect with each other that way as well and, and keep the relationships that we spark today going. One of the big things that we're about at BizHack is about creating a community. And we know that 10KSB is a really strong one. Uh, at the bottom uh, of the meeting, I think most of us know Zoom, you can click on the chat button and uh, put your uh, name and organization and a quick description of who you are. While you do that, I will introduce myself. Um, I like to think of myself as a business storyteller. I spent the first part of my career uh, as a journalist at NPR and PBS. I was the news director here in Miami at uh, WLRN. And uh, then uh, over the last decade, I've worked at startups and billion dollar companies as the head of marketing. And now I'm running my own business. Uh, and I'm a very proud uh, 10 KSB graduate as well as a uh, graduate of Princeton and the masters at FIU locally. Um, and BizHack, um, we're very proud to have partnered with a lot of business support organizations and universities uh, to provide this training. Um, and uh, it's really an essential skill and tool for the modern business owner. Um, we run uh, programs and training that are all uh, specifically about uh, helping business owners uh, market themselves. Uh, our signature program the average participant who runs ads during the program actually makes a 29 to one return on investment. It's something we're very proud of because this is, this is a number that can transform businesses and lives. I also wanted to share with you sort of why I do what I do. And this is important first, because I want you to understand my motivation for doing this kind of work. And second, because I want to model what I'm going to be teaching today, which is talking about why you do what you do uh, and and wh where you, where you were where you learned to value that and, and were inspired by it. So, one of the things we're going to talk about today is your core purpose. What is the purpose uh, uh, of your life and your business? Uh, and for me, uh, it's always been about championing the underdog so they can transform their lives. And this is something that was true when I was a journalist and I was covering students in, in, in underperforming schools. 
uh, or uh, you, you know immigrants when I was at NPR. Uh, and it's true now, uh, I primarily serve small businesses, micro enterprises, 10 KSB businesses, the underdogs of the business world. Um, and the, while we have had you know Fortune 500 clients, uh, I always am drawn to the underdog. And the reason why is because this was something that was inculcated into me and a lesson that was taught to me by my mother. Uh, I grew up in suburban Philadelphia. Uh, I had a you know, privileged middle class, upper middle class life. But my mother spent 35 years teaching art in inner city Philadelphia. And for her, it was always about, you know, serving students who needed her most. And teaching art is kind of an underdog subject. Um, and she taught art really as a way to help build self-confidence and create a safe space for these folks. And I remember I would visit her in class uh, after school and the students would just be flocking to the classroom and talking to Mrs. Gretsch. And she really created a community uh, of, of students that was supportive and where, where uh, they learned, but they also uh, thrived. And, and that's really who, what I've been building all my life and, and what I'm aspire to build with my team with BizHack. So that's what we call my story of me. Uh, and then the story of us, which we'll talk about is, is then how do I transfer you know, my personal journey to you? Well, it's not enough, right, for me <laughs> to uh, you know, work with underdogs. I, I also want to support you, uh, the business underdogs, and help you uh, have the business and lives that thrive. Um, so today we're going to talk about the, uh, biz, the BizHack lead building system, which is a methodology that I've developed uh, over seven years working with 700 businesses that I think really dramatically simplifies the incredibly complex task of digital marketing. We're going to then workshop your business stories. I'll give you an exercise to do. And um, one of my goals, as I said, is to get to know all of you and, and to learn what your needs are um, as I begin to kind of get a better sense uh, of what my ideal customer needs and how to best serve them. Uh, things have changed a lot with COVID. And so uh, I would love to hop on a call with you for 20 minutes, you know, today or tomorrow. And, and my colleague, Lilia, uh, hi, Lilia, um, is going to be messaging you guys with some times and availabilities. And if you're willing to, to hop on a call with me for 20 minutes, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to learn more about you and your business than we can in this setting. If you're not interested, please do not feel you have to do it. Just let us know. Uh, let, let us know that you're not interested and, and, and we won't bother you about it. Um, so the rules for today's session is to please turn on your video, to please be engaged. Uh, we're going to be putting you into uh, breakout rooms of two. Thanks, Wiley. Um, and, um, and one of the other reasons we, we tend to ask people to put on their video um, is you're much more likely to pay attention because uh, I can see all of you. I'm looking at all of your beautiful faces. And, you know, part of our goal, you know, is uh, part of what, what we know about adult education uh, and, and learning online is that if you are uh, engaged uh, and, 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 and visible, you're more likely to get more out of it. All right, so let's jump in. Um, I want to give you a quick overview of the lead building system, that sort of simplified approach to digital marketing. All of our coaching and consulting uses this. It's really, frankly, a lot easier uh, to comprehend than what you might learn uh, in an MBA program. Um, and it's a little bit more um, detailed than what we learned in the Goldman Sachs program. So I know a lot of us uh, feel this way about digital marketing, which is this is a map of all the different options that you have when you're doing digital marketing. It's created by Gartner, the top IT think tank um, for digital marketing. And that is an actual map of everything about digital marketing. So if you feel confused about who to hire, how to measure success, or where even to start, it's not you, it's digital marketing. Digital marketing is a very complex and technical field, and there is no center to it in the way it's traditionally taught. Additionally, you guys, uh, all of us are constrained by time, money, and expertise. Um, and so you need a simplified and proven process for how to approach this and think about this when you're so constrained. And that's really what my goal is with the lead building system. It has a foundation. 
six pillars and nine steps. So the foundation is your business story, which is what we're going to talk about today. The nine, uh, the six pillars are what stands on top of your business story. It's really as you're building different campaigns to try to attract new customers, you need to have these six pillars in place or you're not going to be successful. And um, if we have time, I'll go through each of the pillars in detail. But at a high level, you want to set a campaign objective. What are you trying to accomplish? Believe it or not, this is the number one st uh, stumbling block for most of the businesses we work with, is they have not clearly defined what success looks like in their campaign. I see Annette is sort of shaking her head. I know that you run an agency. Clarifying what your goal is and aligning around that is like the number one biggest stumbling block for most business owners. Uh, then you want to specifically target an audience. Now, business owners tend to be a little better at figuring this one out, but the narrower, the better. And also, there have to be an audience you can find online. And there's a little bit of an art to how to find a customer, a target customer online. It's not uh, simple all the time. Then you need an irresistible offer. In other words, what is what are you offering to give in return, usually for their contact information? Uh, almost all of your businesses are not e-commerce businesses. Rather, these are businesses about lead generation, getting people to give you their contact info. But if you want them to give you their contact info, you need to give them something in return. Usually uh, for most businesses, it's uh, information, uh, like knowledge sharing. Um, it could be you know, attendance at an event like this. Uh, an offer could also be um, a discount uh, or a membership in a loyalty program or anything. Uh, video is the vernacular of the web, and so um, we always encourage folks to use video in their campaigns. You'll get better, better results, larger reach for less money. A compelling message, um, which is sort of how you talk about your business, how you position yourself, how you get people to look at and engage with your ad or your email. And then finally, a call to action. You always want to have a specific request or call to action related to every campaign. For today's event, the call to action is to schedule a 20 minute call with me, right? So, um, you know, I met with my team and I said, what is our goal with these folks today? How do we continue the relationship that we've started? And the call to action is that. And this, as I mentioned, has been developed over seven years with 700 different businesses. So we're gonna start now talking about the foundation, your business story, and the key elements of this are your why, your story of me, and your story of us. And this all adds up to what we call the communications diamond. Now, the lessons that we're talking about today uh, are being practiced every day by the top uh, companies in the world. IBM, the number one B2B marketer in the world, has a chief storytelling officer. Microsoft, General Electric, SAP, Nike, all of them have people in the C-suite whose sole focus and, and, and effort uh, is around storytelling and telling the story of the business. It's another way to think not just of marketing, but of sales and storytelling uh, and leadership. Storytelling is really about the core purpose of your business, and it's the center, the foundation of everything you do. Um, and so uh, some of you might be asking, well, what the heck is a chief storyteller anyway? I'll just cut to the chase. In your company, you are the chief storyteller. You're in charge of telling the company's story because not only is that about marketing, that's also about sales, it's about raising money, whether from a bank or an investor, and it's especially about leading, leading your internal team and attracting the right talent to your team. Uh, the reason I've been able to uh, hire Lilia and Stephanie uh, and the others in my team is because they believe in the purpose and the story of our business. And you're able to attract better and higher quality talent and retain them for longer if you're good at telling your company's story. And stories um, are all about human to human. Marketing, uh, especially when you get into digital marketing, you can kind of lose sight of the human to human aspect. Uh, but our, our belief at BizHack is that a story is what takes marketing from a technical field to something that is human to human, and people are hardwired to respond to a personal story. That's how we connect. And that storytelling is how you unlock the power of digital marketing. This is not necessarily the way you'll hear this exp um, shared in other contexts. This is really something that comes out of my background as a journalist 
and in working with a lot of small businesses, your business story is your secret sauce. It's your differentiator and it's what makes your business different from others. So there are two components to your business story. And the first is your why or your core purpose. This is an idea that's been talked about a lot in leadership circles. And uh, raise your hand if you've ever heard of Simon Sinek and, and the golden circle and start with why. We're applying a lot of those principles now to marketing. And the reason why is because people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And a great example of that is Apple. Apple was able to charge two to three times more for this essentially the same product. And it's not because the product is two to three times better. It's because it's because those people who like me use Apple products really buy into the idea of think different, the Apple uh, why. Um, and so uh, I know with BizHack, when we really think about why it's about championing you, the underdog, so you can thrive, how we do it is storytelling strategy and software. And what we offer is content coaching and community. But if you're selling, you don't wanna start with the what, you wanna start with the why, get people aligned with your vision and mission and purpose, and then talk to them about how you actually do it and what you do. So there are three levels to your why, the personal, your family and team, and then a positive impact in the world. In other words, when I ask a business owner, why did you start your business? They usually say, I wanted to have freedom over my schedule. Uh, I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to take what I'm doing and own it and bring it into the world. That's great. But that's more about you and it's less customer facing. Then a lot of times they'll say, well, I wanna give a comfortable life to my family or I wanna support my team so they can have the best life they can have. That's great and that's very valuable as well. But there's another level of impact that I really want you guys to think about, um, which is your positive impact in the world. So for instance, um, Gary, Gary Ireland runs a law office that focuses on employment and startups. Gary, why is, of all the types of law you could practice, why are you focusing on employment and uh, law and working with startups? That's a great question. And thank you for having us. Uh, my goal is to, to bring out the best in everyone I work with, in, including those that are on the other side of the table. I've worked with um, the Boy Scouts in, in opening up the organization to girls, opening up to 200,000 new girls have the leadership opportunities and, and all of the assets that go with uh, becoming an Eagle Scout and, and just getting the training. Uh, and that carries over into everything else I've done. I've sat on the board of a gay rights organization. I've partnered with the NAACP in several, and I've gotten a, a, an award from them at their national level and, and just got an award from the, um, the Na National Organization for Women for my work with, with the Boy Scouts and, and trying to create um, out of real opposition, as you can imagine, from, a, from an all-male organization to, to opening it up and welcoming girls. Um, and it was not always that way. Yeah. So we, you know, I, I I use that in my in my business the same the same strategies to even when I'm working with you know when you tell somebody some bad news that that you know that one of their um, employees is is discriminating based on you know uh, working conditions you're not usually met with a lot of positive uh, reinforcement and I've been able to bridge that and and just walk, work through some of the issues which are often very confrontational. I really love that. You know, it, it's it's a very different and unique reason for um, you know being a um, a lawyer, right? Uh, it's specific to you. It, it really differentiates you from other types of lawyers. Um, do you think that you tell this story effectively on your website in your prospecting calls? Is this is this something that you talk about? It's not something I lead with. Uh, you know, you asked me, so I told you, but you know, I had been thinking about it while you, you raised the question. So, you know, I, I, um, I'm not an environmental uh, attorney, but I've created one of the largest environmental um, beach erosion mitigation um, uh, initiatives on, on the east end of Long Island. So, so I'm able to work with groups that are different than me, that are outside of my expertise, 
Um, and, and I try to convey that when I'm speaking to other people, because I, I worked with um, the creator of virtual reality. I worked on his patent work. And what that was, was creating a team to do that. I'm not a patent attorney. Yeah. So I, what I would invite all of you guys to think about, and I'm going to put you now uh, into, into groups. And, and by the way, welcome Gilbert and Jane and, and Pablo. It's great to have you guys here. Um, I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms now, pairs. Um, and what I'm going to invite you to do is really talk about what is the positive impact in the world that your business has? In other words, if you were to disappear from the world, um, how would the world be a worse place, right? What impact does your business have in the world? I'll give you an example. BizHack has worked with 700 small businesses. And for those folks who you know, <clears throat> show up and do the work, it can have a transformative impact in their lives and their businesses. And th they take what we started with them and they then apply it to growing their business. And that then allows their special sauce to reach more people. There's something, uh, the, the something bigger they're going for to reach more people. It also has a huge impact on their employees and their family and the individuals themselves. So through BizHack, uh, our uh, core purpose is to help entrepreneurs like you thrive. That's our why, that's our positive impact in the world. And frankly, uh, for many small businesses, they don't really know where to turn. So they turn to us and we're very blessed to be able to be there. That's us. So what I'd like you guys to do is try to figure out what your kind of core purpose is. Uh, I'm gonna open you up into rooms. Uh, you're paired up um, I'm, uh, and uh, we will be back uh, in 10 minutes. You'll have five minutes each. Uh, I'll give you a warning and uh, I'll probably join some of the rooms as well just to say, hey. So we'll see you back in 10 minutes to talk about your core purpose. Welcome back, Nicholas, Annette, Gary, Wiley. Great to have you back. Ariel, Mikael, Pablo. So um, I had a chance to join some of your sessions and it was really, really rich uh, stuff. And um, what, what I learned um, is once you've identified your, your why, the, the, the change in the world you wanna make, the next step in the process is what's called the story of me, which is your personal reason for caring about that thing. So for instance, Nicolas runs a pool company, but he said that it's really about entertainment and that his whole career has been about entertainment. So my homework for Nicolas is who in your life taught you to care about entertainment. Uh, Gary, who you guys met earlier, talked about law and working for, um, you know, basically like civil rights cases and the, and the, uh, the Boy Scouts and, and, and other folks. Um, in his breakout, he talked about working with, um, you know, minorities and, and other disadvantaged groups. I asked Gary, where did that come from? His answer was immediately my grandfather. My grandfather was a civil rights attorney, a country lawyer, and he took up a lot of causes. That helps explain why of all the types of law that Gary could do and all the types of clients that Gary could take on and all of the causes that Gary could spend his time with, he's choosing to follow in his grandfather's footsteps and to do that. Another great example is Ariel. Uh, Ariel has an awesome, uh, show everybody your amazing customized gift wrap. So that is Ariel's product. Uh, it's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I love it. And Ariel, I said, well, Ariel, how, like, why do you do that kind of work? And he said, well, my dad, my whole family is big into gifts. And my dad was an excellent rapper of gifts. And then when I was married, uh, when I got married, I wanted to give something special to my wife and I didn't have any gift wrap. So I decided to put my face on some custom gift wrap. And she thought it was hilarious and really personal. And that was the seed of the business idea. And, you know, Ariel is gonna be, you know, acquired by Hallmark and he's gonna be, you know, a multimillionaire and he's gonna have a great life. But that story of why he created this gift wrap, something that was both um, personal touch and entertaining, funny, 
is all about his upbringing and his personal story. So, you know, we're running uh, short on time, but that's the big second element, okay, uh, of your, um, your business story is what we call your story of me. I'm going to now play for you an example of how this can happen at the highest levels of business. In this case, it's going to be uh, the CEO of Starbucks. So um, give me a sec while I get it set up and you're going to hear a story of me uh, in action. And then there's one key other element, which we'll talk about midway through, which is called the story of us. My father was a so uh, well, just as a quick uh, this is called Masters of Scale. It's a great podcast on growing your business. Highly recommend it. And this is Howard Schultz, uh, the CEO, uh, former CEO of Starbucks, talking about how to do good and to do well. And he's talking about his childhood. Or two veteran high school dropout and came back from the war with yellow fever and unfortunately ended up really not realizing the aspiration of the American dream he thought he was going to come home to after the war. He was a delivery driver picking up and delivering cloth diapers before the invention of Pampers. And in March of 1960, on a delivery, he fell on a sheet of ice and fractured his ankle and broke his hip. The injury caused him to get fired no workman's compensation, obviously no health insurance. When I was seven years old, I literally came home from school, opened the apartment door, and saw my father laid out on a couch with a cast from his hip to his ankle. Listen, at the age of seven, how could I possibly understand the impact that would have on me? But it, it scarred me to watch and witness my parents and my mother just go through such a hard time. As I got older, so that's a story of me. It's a, it's a woeful story about his dad getting hurt uh, and getting fired, and he, the the difficult times that he and his family lived through as a result. Now, if you were me, if I were you, I'd be asking, what the heck does this have to do with overpriced lattes? This is the move he makes, and 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 Howard Schultz is a expert storyteller. It's one of his signature qualities. But watch how he pivots and in just 30 seconds connects that terrible story from his childhood to the whole purpose of a Fortune 500 company. I think I've always been sensitized to people living on the other side of the tracks and as Starbucks evolved, I think I was trying to build the kind of company my father never got a chance to work for. A company that would try and balance profit with conscience. A company that would try to balance profit with conscience. That is how Howard Schultz connected his personal story to the story of his business. And I got to be honest, you know, Starbucks lives that out. Uh, some of their, you know, First of all, how they treat their employees, their part-time benefits, um, you know, their pay, but also even how they approach tough things like conversations about race with their customers. They, they really do live out this company that would try to balance profit with conscience better, I think, than most. And, and the reason why is very simple, because of the leader and the values and his personal upbringing and his story. And that story, I guarantee you, he tells it all the time when he's hiring, uh, when he's talking to shareholders, that story of me becomes a precision instrument for your marketing, your leadership, your sales. And that is the essence of your business story. So you'll remember how I talked about my mom at the beginning. That is intentional. I have culled my, from my life stories that I can talk about that help explain who I am and why I do what I do and also build trust between my prospects and me. A, a great example, uh, another great example of this is my grandfather was a coach in La Liga, the Spanish elite soccer league. And I remember when I was a kid, 
I would visit Spain and he would train me in the same drills that uh, he taught his elite soccer players. Uh, my father ended up becoming my soccer coach when we grew up in Philadelphia and my sister uh, actually became an elite soccer player and coach uh, in NCAA Division I women's soccer. Coaching has always been a part of who I am and it's a big part of what we do at BizHack. It's really helping you become the best version of yourself. Do you see what I did there? I talked about my personal story and then I said, it's part of what we do at BizHack to help you become the best version of yourself. That, that is the move, right? That's called story of me, story of us. And what the business story really is, is it becomes your communications diamond. Instead of that complex map that I showed you at the beginning, I would encourage you to think about your marketing instead as a diamond with different facets. So depending on who you're talking to, if you're talking to a sales person, uh, someone that you're trying to sell to, a client, if you're talking to a judge, if you're a lawyer, if you're talking to um, a banker, uh, if you're talking to your investors, if you're talking to a potential hire, the core, the essence, the, the values are always consistent. That's the diamond. But the facet, what you talk about, that changes. So when you're thinking about a tweet or a social media post or an ad or an email, always remember why you do what you do and have that be underneath the communication. And then you express a version of that in 140 characters. So that is the metaphor that I prefer to use for thinking about digital marketing. It's telling your business story online, simple as that. And so then the next step to that uh, is once you have your business story, you should put it on your Facebook business page. There's actually a section where they invite businesses to tell their story. Put it on the top of your LinkedIn profile before you list all your credentials. Put it on your website, ideally in a video where you're talking to your audience. Put it in your business directory where you're listed, whether it's on Yelp or you know, BizHack alumni are part of a business directory. Put it in all of those places and then when you're building campaigns, which we'll talk about now, the foundation is always the values and the purpose expressed in your business story. Um, I'm gonna keep going and then we're gonna open it up to a Q and A that'll go a little past the hour. And I welcome all of you guys to stick with me for that. Um, if you haven't yet, would love to have that one-on-one -on -one with you guys to talk more about how to apply this in your specific business. We won't have time to workshop that with everybody. And I know Lilia is working uh, behind the scenes uh, to try to help schedule those for later today. Um, so once you have the foundation, you then wanna build on that in your digital marketing campaigns. And you start, as I said, by defining your campaign objective. And for most small businesses, there's really only two objectives. You wanna either generate leads or you wanna create brand awareness. That's sort of the initial effort. And then eventually you wanna convert folks from leads to customers. Those will determine what your KPI or your key performance indicators are, right? For brand awareness, it's how many people do you reach and do they engage? with your content, with lead generation is how many people give you their contact information, and with lead conversion, it's how many people actually became a sale. Um, and the, that's the simplified way of thinking about the metrics for your marketing. Marketers tend to overcomplicate this and add all sorts of other numbers in the mix, but at its real core, you know, how many people saw your content how many people gave you their contact info and how many people became customers? It's as simple as that. Next is your target audience. You really wanna be focused on your ideal customer. The reason that I spend a lot of time working with 10 KSB businesses is because 10 KSB businesses are of a certain size. They've defined a growth opportunity and you're clearly willing to invest in yourself and your business, or you wouldn't have taken the program. So that's why we tend to think of 10 KSB as our ideal customer. Then there's your irresistible offer. Your irresistible offer has three components. Your first is getting them 
to give you their contact information. That's a free irresistible offer. A foot in the door offer is a lower price point offer that allows them to try your service out. And then the upsell offer is to get them to become kind of a full customer. So like for a yoga studio, for instance, a free irresistible offer would be a free class. A foot in the door offer would be a discount on a 10 pack. And then the upsell would be the membership. And every business, uh, almost every business has these three steps where get them in the door, uh, I mean, get, get them from never having heard of you to engaging and learning about you then get them in the door to open their wallet for something. And then finally upselling them on your core offer. The thumb stopping video is essential for any ads that you're going to run or in any social media posts that you want to have get good performance. And these are not big full fledged commercials. These are six to 12 seconds long. We recommend our businesses use photo slideshows, um, which get, very good performance and are very inexpensive or free to create and you can do very quickly i know in our program we actually show you how to produce one of those uh, in about an hour uh, and it's not the sort of thing you want to invest a lot of time or money into because you don't know if it's going to work until you try it uh, and we show free build building tools to do that when it comes to messaging we really encourage and, and the vernacular of social media is to be what we call atv messaging authentic transparent and when appropriate, vulnerable. Um, and I think you can sense that in the way that I'm communicating to you uh, and the way you've communicated back to me, there's a ton of authenticity, transparency, and vulnerability. And that is really powerful when it comes to engaging people online. And then finally, call to action. You never wanna forget to ask someone to do something with you. And um, the call to action is really what kicks them to the next step in their customer journey. So for instance, if it's a Facebook ad, you're asking them to click on a landing page or lead form and then fill out their contact information. And then you're gonna email them or call them. And at each step you're asking for something. So always remember to ask for something. Don't just send an email with information, have them uh, ask for something. So that's the, 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 the what and the how. Now, the, the, the what and the why, the, the how, obviously gets a little more complex and that's really what our training is all about. We've developed a nine step process to walk you through how to do this for an ad on Facebook or Instagram. And once you've done it, once you've ridden that bicycle, it's much easier for you to do it yourself, hire someone to do it for you, um, bring in an agency and manage them effectively. So that's really kind of the, the focus and the methodology of our program. Um, we're starting our next seven week program uh, at the end of the month on August 30th. Um, it's a program by application only, uh, but I will say that we uh, always accept 10 KS beers because you've already been vetted uh, by Goldman Sachs and Babson. And so we know you uh, match our ideal criteria. Um, you, the, the goal is for you to earn while you learn, to, to practice using the lead building system, to practice telling your business story, but doing it in front of real customers while running real ads. Uh, and then getting coaching both one-on-one -on -one and in a small group to get those ads personalized to your business and to be the most effective possible. And as I talked about, this approach really works. Our average participant makes $29 in revenue for every dollar they spend in ads. The classes are held on Monday and Wednesdays, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, they're live instruction. Uh, and then you get labs and coaching. Uh, so it's, it's an intense um, commitment. Uh, but it really helps you master and conquer digital marketing once and for all. Uh, we give you a personalized learning journey report, a certificate of completion, and we have a money back guarantee. Uh, you know, we put all of our integrity into this and we know you're going to get a great experience. And if you don't feel it was worth it, you let us know and we return the money. Um, as a follow-up, uh, in addition to us hopefully uh, sitting down and having a chat, uh, we're also going to send you a uh, the lead building system checklist, which is a two page checklist, uh, which includes the foundation and the six pillars and the core elements of each. Uh, this is really almost like a summary uh, of the curriculum that we offer. And it's a great way for you to see how far along are you uh, in the in your digital marketing journey. So uh, we've covered uh, some amazing ground today. We've talked about our business story and the two key elements of it. 
your core purpose or your why and your story of me story of us Th those are the essential elements of your business story um we also talked about the lead building system which is the framework built on top uh, of the foundation those six pillars that you want for every campaign um and as far as next steps i strongly encourage you know gary and ariel and all of you to take a minute uh and try to document your story of me that personal story about your wife and your uh father ariel about your grandfather gary um, and just write that down, give yourself some room to draft that, and then connect that uh, with your business and share it with your peers and colleagues. I, I hope that that will then start to appear in your marketing. And then uh, would love to meet with you guys, learn more about your businesses. This is really a fact-finding mission for me to learn about my ideal customer and to see how I can best serve you. Um, so with that, I just wanted to say, you know, COVID, uh, the Delta variant, uh, the, the, the crisis continues. Um, there is danger uh, for many of our businesses, but there's also tremendous opportunity. Uh, and BizHack is here to help you grasp onto your, your growth opportunity. I wanna thank you guys for taking the time